By the end of World War I, times had changed for the Rio Grande. Previous to the war, to end all wars, government restrictions on railroad operations were not significant. But now, the Rio Grande had financial problems. The end of World War II found the entire Rio Grande system in poor physical condition, but the oil and gas business at Farmington, New Mexico, provided a needed shot in the arm of the narrow gauge operations. But by 1964, huge snows in depths of 25 to 35 feet forced shutdown of the narrow gauge over Cumbres from January to May. By the end of 1969, abandonment was permitted, ending almost 100 years of narrow gauge operations. In the late 60s, Emery Goulash loaded his 16 millimeter Bolex and tripod into his car and headed for Colorado and New Mexico with the intent of filming the Rio Grande before its final death knell. The outstanding creative motion pictures which follow are a tribute to the railroad and the photographer. Steam freight operations required considerable servicing facilities. Let's follow the makeup of a typical train at the eastern terminus of the narrow gauge, Alamosa. At Alamosa, pipes for the oil fields were providing some revenues for the railroad. 